Gentlemen, ladies, all of the above, none of the above, and welders too. You can always tell an old fabricator, you just can't tell them much. From the usual scumbags at the Hazard Fart, the Vulcan Mig Max 215, this is a hot glue gun for metal. We have a quorum here in the Empire Dirt, and we have come to the consensus that welding metal is fucking cool. There's two kinds of people on the earth, those that can weld, and those that want to learn how to weld. Taking angry pixies out of yonder uh, receptacle, uh, jamming it through a gun, getting an arc as bright as the sun to weld, melt, and re-solidify steel. I have long advocated learning on a stick welder prior to this because on a stick welder, you will get the learning curve. It'll be real tough at first, and then you'll just learn like a bastard. If you start off with this guy, and I have just brought one of these into the shop. If you start off with this guy, every new process that you learn is going to be a huge learning curve because this is so friggin easy. But if you, if you learn the stick welding first, if you learn stick welding first, then this is a piece of cake and TIG welding is a piece of cake. If you learn this guy first, then the stick, you're fucked. You got to learn all over and, and then you got to learn the TIG to boot. Better to get the stick welder, also cheaper. You don't want to spend too much money on a hobby that you don't know is going to take. You know, some people don't like getting burned. You're welding, you're going to get fucking burned. Your welds should sound like bacon, but if they smell like bacon, you're on fire. Welding is a skill, is a, a fundamental process for to use in just about any industry. And it will... It will put you in good stead no matter what your chosen vocation or profession. Being able to weld pays dividends. Now this is my first foray outside of Lincoln or Miller into a, a MIG welder and clipboard warriors will be jumping up and down saying it's not MIG, it's not metal inert gas, it's mag, metal active gas because there's a bit of uh, carbon dioxide in the gas and that reacts with the the steel in order to uh, get rid of the it oxidizes that's that uh, gray layer over your bead so mag welding but if you talk to anybody and you say you have a mag welder they'll look at you or ask a technical question about a mag welder they'll look at you like you're a fucking welding inspector which is not a good thing <laughs> so where the rubber meets the load is the most important first part. And as I said, I ran a 252 for about a decade off and on just for funsies. And that was, that was a Miller 252. That is the gold standard as far as I'm concerned. And then, uh, then a couple years ago, picked up a 211, was me messing with a Miller 211, and that thing was a fucking piece of junk. Incredible piece of junk. This Vulcan is what they're trying to compare uh, themselves to, and for sure, this Vulcan is by far better than the 211. Just on the, on the monkey pulling the trigger side, right out of the box, that Miller 211, the fucking gun didn't work. Super, super chintzy feeling. And the trigger itself would auto lock. Like that wasn't a design feature. It was because there was some flashing or some shit in there. And if you put any kind of side load on it, on the, on the gun itself, it would lock down and you'd spool out a whole bunch of wire, big bird's nest of wire until finally it short circuited on the workbench or the ground clamp and then you'd have a, a red hot piece of yeah bird's nest it, it terrible i could not believe how shitty that that miller was so this is a pleasant surprise because the gun itself is reasonably robust and for a kit this comes with the kit a 211 if you even want to use the jesus thing you got to get a new gun right off the hop you got to get a decent gun we're into the handle and this we can see is a, a pretty new product here because we got 17 first month of uh, 2017 and then we have all these other tabs they're looking to keep this in service right up until uh, 2022 
So we're the, the, likely mold won't last that long, but um, well, we'll see. We'll see in five years. Yeah. In this case, there's no markings, no material markings. It is very rigid, extremely rigid. So there's got to be some glass fiber reinforcing in there. Yeah high amount of glass fiber reinforcing you can hear it when i cut it as far as the material i would guess that it's nylon but since there's no markings uh, we got a truss to our sniffer now we'll get in there with the old blue healer routine far more appropriate than the blue steeler routine and you smell that it's uh it smells just like a nylon rope so that is glass fiber reinforced nylon very stiff, not bad at uh, not bad at not melting in the spatter. One thing I do not like about the gun is the cup, the gas diffuser here is loosey goosey on there. It doesn't sit solid, so when you strike the arc, this starts kind of moving around, and it's a little off-putting if you're trying. It's just one more thing to kind of worry about this thing. It doesn't fill you with confidence when the thing is moving around. It's not like you're supposed to be resting on this or walking the cup or whatever, but, you know, shit happens and you got to do what you got to do sometimes. The switch, totally shitty switch. Weird. This is a custom-built switch. There's no micro switch in here. So this would be... This is bizarre. They've made their own switch. Let's try and get that off. So stake on connectors with some nice, not heat shrink, but little vinyl. Yeah. Little bits of vinyl on there. Kind of, yeah. If we can get that off. Very strange design uh, decision made here where they've gone and made their own switch instead of getting a bog standard micro switch what's in everything from every kettle in Christendom they've gone and made their own little contact switch so that that to me is kind of that's really weird that they could do that for cheaper than getting a bog standard switch and now of course yeah this isn't that great you see the affectation there there's a roll pin what keeps it located in in the handle but the roll pin is already all off kilter there. And this is where this is where the 200 pound gorilla meets the load. So it's, yeah. I'd be surprised if this lasts for any amount of time. It, hopefully this is a consumable you can, or a part you can buy. Yeah, and there's all, already some looseness in the hips over here. In that pin bore, it's already loose, yeah. Well, that's disappointing. That ain't no fucking good at all. The good thing about this gun is it's not proprietary. There's no interchange or there's very good interchangeable with other brands. All the tips are the same. So if you need thicker wire, you just change the tip and thread it in. The reason it's copper is because molten steel, molten iron is not wetting on copper. Now you still get it where it burns back and melts in and then solidifies, but it should not weld itself on there if it does it's just in the surface pores and the little spring here the little spring here it's a little bit small it seems like on the od because you put it over as i said you put it over the od onto that spring and the retention spring holds it real good but it's still loosey-goosey all over there and then we see on the back end something uh yeah, pretty, pretty chintzy. We got a little zap strap here, a slice in the cable to, to break out the switch contacts, and then uh, I like chicken's tape, what they use for keeping in the ones and zeros. Of course, this gets hot. It gets, uh, it's gonna get totally slutty and disgusting in no time. And uh, then your cable's gonna split all the way down here. This is just, this is, uh, yeah, we got a little bit higher cost here, a little well, far better integrity tape. This is glass fiber tape. If 
for high voltage uh, cable splicing applications. I just happen to have in the box of tricks. And this will put us in far better stead and uh, disgusting. This, you know, this vinyl tape just turns into a pile of goo. Oh, excuse me. Teachable moment. Mettez tes souliers, viens t'en ici, j'ai besoin de ton aide. Yeah, I'm coming. Tu vois là mes outils? T'as besoin de ranger ça. Away. S'il vous plaît. When you come in somebody's shop, you don't mess around and leave a mess. Whoopsie doodles. Ok, ma jolie, merci pour ton aide. What is that? This is a welding gun. Do you want to learn how to weld? Yeah! <laughs> Are you not too young? Four and a half? Four years old. Four years old? Are you too young? Are you ready? You ready? Okay, well, we'll... I'll, I'll get it set up for you later, okay? Is it loud? Nope. Quiet? It's not quiet either. But it is fun. You take metal, and you take electricity, and you melt the metal, and it sticks together. It's like glue. Cool! <laughs> Thank you. Can you help me take off my outer boot? It's hard for me to take off my boot. No, you can. You're good. You're smart. Thanks for cleaning up. Now here's a little straw man for those uh, Instagram welders type stuck in the back bay taking pictures of each other's rainbow weaves. You, you know the type. So this is solid core wire and I had put on the, the uh, serrated roller and I had a brain fart when I did that because at work anytime the welders were, were running these they would always have serrated uh, rollers. That's because they're they're doing dual shield. So they're doing spray transfer dual shield and then just had a brain fart. So I gotta swap that over to, to the correctly sized ah, flat V-groove roller. If I could ever get that off. Before we get her upended, get get into the guts of her ass over a tea kettle. You see a problem here. Plastic hinges. So they're fine under normal use, but welders never get normal use. So what'll happen is, say that's down, and you let this slam. Well, that should be okay. You can see it's tweaking this one over. But if there's ever anything hanging out like this, and you give her a slam, it's gonna break these right half in two. So hinges, plastic hinges, shitty. Trying to ginger careful the front panel off here. I got our jewelers pry bars ineffectually swiping at the ribbon cable connector. They've added some celastic or some sort of anti tamper schmoo in there, red glue. That's tough to get the Jesus thing out without breaking the board. Hmm. There comes a time in every man's wife, you just gotta say, fuck it. Let the chips fall where they may. There we go, that wasn't so bad. Hey, once you get the tip of it in. Gotta jack off the knobs, off the potentiometers here in order to get the board off. Not so much to see why it works, We or how it works. We know how it works. Potentiometers will be on this board, it'll feed into the into the controller inside just tell you what sort of so that's an interesting knob it does have some what do you call it greebling <laughs> a little bit a little bit extreme on the uh, <laughs> accoutrement one thing i do not like here is we see the potentiometer does not have a nut affixing it to the board so we're relying on the pcb to prevent the yeah, so if you whack one of these by mistake, you're actually whacking the PCB directly. There's no, yeah, there's no nut to help that along. And this is, well, that's a stiff piece of metal. So they should have, really, really should have a nut on there because if you give it a whack, it's going to swing that, crack the board potentially. There's the board disrobed in all her grandeur. Not too bad. 
nothing disgusting, no jankiness, uh, no Chineseium to, to speak of. And we got nice conformal coating on here. Perfect. A little bit odd where the rotary switches are directly nutted right into the PCB. It's not, you know, she's got some flexion to it. So when you're, when you're reefing on these switches in a mad panic or rage, depending, um, you got to consider that you're right on the board. So just be a little bit ginger with that. And of course, if you have one of these greebled <laughs> nuts on here, that is a little bit loose or, or slightly proud of this board, you know, during the assembly, if it's slightly proud of this, if you give her a whack, you're actually pushing directly onto the potentiometer. And these are not all that great at axial thrust. They're not all that great at radial thrust either, but. So here's the brain boxery. There's the clock there, a couple of MOSFETs couple of indicator LEDs, some comparators, uh, probably operational amplifiers. Look at this though. Built on board to this brain box is a USB. USB. And also on the back side of her, a tactile switch, not accessible by the operator. So what is that for? Well, Got to be for programming. Hmm. Might be ripe for the, uh, well, that's the thing. There's no, there's no unlocked features. Oh, this has all the features you, you know, there's nothing. It's not like a TIG that you need more frequency or, yeah. So I don't know if you could do, you, you could have a look, see what's on there. But if you don't have the drivers for this thing or you don't have the programmer for that brand of chip, it might not do anything. TMC, TM4C123G. Speaking to the Death Star Greebles, look at this cork stuffer. <laughs> the amount of ejection pins on this injection molded part, just the ABS plastique and it's a valence, nothing more to it. Maybe a handle, but there's also a handle in the middle of her, so quite wasteful for fashion. I guess there is, you know, the Kardashian set is getting into uh, welding, but I would suggest you waste it. This is a waste. You get rid of this and you put that money into putting an extra wrap of electrical tape on the on the gun end. Huh? Makes a sense to me. Now let's okay, so we got uh, we got a little grounding strip. And the grounding strips are real positively affixed, so that is nice. They're not gonna weeble wobble off. Ah, uh, there we go. That's a nice, nice piece of tin there. And then powder electro, uh, it, it's painted, but it must be electro painted. And then some nice louvers on here just to aid in dust ingress, I guess. And uh, unless this is, uh, yeah, this might be a suck fan and then it blows out here. Probably blows out here. There's got to be a filter, I would assume couple three dozen m6 screws panel screws and we are in like sin overall impression a tea bag we got some good wire management here we don't got the uh, 1976 hustler bush style going on all kinds of zap straps and also some some clips we got two two little 12 volt or 24 volt solenoids and they control the gas from the front and from the back. How you set which one goes off, I'm not sure. You have to look in the manual for that. One thing that's disconcerting, absolutely no air filtration through here. So you see all these components and then they are conformally coated. So that means that there's a layer of, a thin layer of probably urethane plastic on top of that, just kind of gooped on there, painted on, but no mitigation for dust. Of course, when you're welding, grinding, you're going to get a lot of dust. So I am going to add, now that's an interesting thing that there's no filtration. Are they worried about the filter getting plugged and then the thing overheating all the time, the guy getting pissed off? Or is that a case where they want the dust in there so it blows up quick, quicker, you know, because that, that's kind of a, a crib, not a crib death effect. That's, that 
lowers the lifetime of the machine. You get a whole big layer of dust on there. There's less cooling and there's conductive dust is toxic, absolutely toxic to electronicals. So I'm going to put a little filter on there, not to reduce the airflow, just to pick up some of the, some of the particles. It's not going to pick everything up, but just some of the particles. I've got one big fan here. This is just a, like a CPU ATX power supply fan type deal. And then another fan here, of course, this must be what's doing the switching here and here. This must be the input rectification. Got a bunch of capacitors, big nasty bastards there. 450 volts. So we're taking 220, we're rectifying it. That jumps it up quite a bit. So we'll be looking at 400 volts on the DC bus more than likely. If not more than that, bunch of chokes, all sorts of stuff going on here. We'll get in and have a closer look. They're really gunning hard for the kind of hobby prosumer upper end uh, of things there at the hazard fraud. This is nice. There's an actual schematic in the manual. You don't get that very often anymore. So that might, you, you might even be able to buy parts for this. You never know. I don't know if there's a secondary parts market for the hazard fraud stuff, but maybe you send it in and get it fixed or maybe they just give you a new one. A couple little, well, power comes in, of course. There's a big beefy relay here, 40 amp, uh, no name, kind of Chineseium, but no big deal. I, I have gleaned through the components. It's a mix match of whatever, you know, whatever fit the bill. There's a Toshiba here. I saw a, uh, an on semi down there. Uh, these IGBTs, I highly doubt they're Infineon, but they're probably... Well, that guy down there is... That's a... Uh, on semiconductor so there are some good parts in here and then other just sort of non-name brand parts so of course it gets rectified rectum fried through here onto the dc bus these big capacitors store the charge one thing we don't like to see is the uh, all kinds of elastic that's great but the elastic attaching right on the uh the wrap on the capacitors a lot of times they'll put an additional wrap on here because that wrap breaks off and of course that needs to be insulated lots of elastic very nice uh, lots of mitigation for vibration it's positively affixed with actual screws actual hardware all of the connectors has some sort of anti-tamper schmoo on there and it's tough to get off so it's not going to just fall off on you couple little things are kind of janky a little bit questionable we have resistors here these resistors of resistors are, are little tiny heaters of course so you have a component on a heat sink with a heater on it so you're trying to sink the heat out of this component and then you put a five watt heater beside it same thing here it's a five watt heater sandwiched between two devices what need to stay cool uh, we have uh, lots and lots of heat sinking. No dearth of aluminium in here. None at all. Uh, another little janky thing is we have a current transformer around an output, but it's zap strapped on and it's relying on it. It's not affixed to anything. It's just kind of rubbing up against the motor. Uh, the motor, DC uh, 24 volt motor, slow speed, 170 RPM. So that's your drive mechanism. And we can already see here, the static electricity is making the dust build up on that casement. And on the input side, lots and lots of filtering. All these filter caps in here, input choke, and some PCT, so positive temperature coefficient. They're essentially resistors. As the current goes up, the resistance goes up. They uh, they limit the amount of current going in some metal oxide varistors for voltage spikes all lots and lots of mitigation for for noise and we even see here that the control board is on the front panel and then we have this we have this ribbon cable going through all this high power electronicals and we got this kind of doohickey on there what is that well that is ferrite that is uh, an inductor in order to reduce the high-speed signaling, uh, high-speed noise. Well, disappointingly, you lift up the skirts on some 
would be cheese grade Chinesium in your finger, you'd get some invasive species, but well, sadly, she's uh, there's nothing too horrific in there to speak of. A couple little things, jankiness, of course, the, the gun, the gun's a little janky. So when when it craps out, you get yourself a new gun. Also, it's quite short, you know, she mightn't be but three inches, smells more like a foot. That shit don't fly. The, uh, what was that joke about the blind? I uh, went out with a blind girl last night. She gave me a hand job. Said this was the biggest one she put her hands on. I told her she was pulling my leg. <laughs> what else? Oh yeah, the uh, this uh, there's a little bit of jankiness here. A little so there's a there's a washer there because this was too big of a hole. Although having a look at this uh, Leviton, so uh, an actual name brand twist lock in there, and it's it's got a reset uh, circuit breaker. I mean nothing too horrific. I'm going to go ahead and try and get this back together. In a future video, we'll do the spray transfer as well as the short circuit welding. We'll try out some different materials. I got a spool gun. We'll come from Amazon. We'll check that out. You know, looking at this, all the components in here, there, there's not much margin on, on this. This might even be a loss leader What for uh, reducing the inherent stink lines associated with hazard fraud. They might be trying to move a little bit more upmarket. And with this offering, it's definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, like I say, she's a sore dick deal partner. Uh, as to whether or not the quality will stay up in six, eight, ten years. You know, that, that's the thing. They might come out with a super skookum one and then start, start paring her back a little bit to to tweak up their uh, profit margins. Or this could be a loss leader just to get you in the door. You start buying welders from there, then all of a sudden you're buying your consumables from there, all of a sudden you're buying your PPE from there, all of a sudden uh, the wholesaler is out of business and uh, <laughs> Hazard Frog got you by the short and curlies. Here's the thing, the old gray mare, my old uh, purple thermodyne box, what I've been using for uh, EDM, electric discharge machining, not uh, uh, electronic dance music. The other EDM power supply, uh, she ain't what she used to be. It doesn't weld near as smooth as it used to, and it's got the DC TIG. So I think having a look at this, I'm even going to bite the bullet and get the Omelette Pro 220, I think it is. We'll do AC TIG welding as well. We'll be able to do aluminum TIG welding in addition to running this off the spool. We'll just be welding fools. Till next time, thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.